Okay, so I'm up. Here's that esophagus again. And I'm underneath the esophagus. And I found a sort of hard thing in the mesentery. So I'm cutting the mesentery. And you can see that dorsal artery there is quite large. But I'm cutting through the mesentery so I can get at this organ. I'm wondering, what is this hard thing here? So this might all be ovary here. Sometimes they're floppy and sometimes they're hard. Cutting that open, not sure what that is. So when I'm not sure, I look it up. It's where this thing is where I'd expect to find like the testes, which makes me think it's an ovary, but it's so small. Ovaries are usually like this big. Like I'm wondering if this floppy thing is the ovary, because that's the size I'm expecting it, not this little hard ball. Maybe this is the ovary and this is a new egg forming and it just hasn't gotten to the size of this egg yet. That would make more sense to me. Oh, there's something called a nidamental gland. I wonder if it could be a nidamental gland because that would make sense because that would be attached to the oviduct, which is what this is. This is the oviduct that we pulled the baby sharks out of that turns into the uterus and vagina. So that's the oviduct. That could be the nidamental gland at the top. And then this floppy yellow thing up here would be the ovary. That would make sense. Because there's another one on this side. You can feel that hard bit. You can see the oviduct. That hard bit might be the gland. And then this is like the ovary is falling to pieces up here. That might be what we're seeing. On males, oh, I gotta move this back down to the tail end. On males, you would see instead of, oh, oh, is that, what do you got down here? I was gonna say there's usually like seminal vesicle, but like you wouldn't see it on a male. I'm trying to remember what this organ is called. Just a rectal gland, is that what it's called? Yeah, I think that's the rectal gland. I still don't know where the spleen went on this creature. It's spleenless. I think that must be the rectal gland. That's where you find it. You can see how hard, like the wall at, of the vagina right at the end here is quite thick to allow for stretching and muscular contractions. And there's, even though it's all coming out at the same spot, there's slightly different places for baby sharks to come out versus, where are the kidneys? I can't find the kidneys, so I'm not quite sure where they are, but this is where they would be, like against the back wall here, attached to that dorsal artery system. That's definitely the pancreas. I wonder if the pancreas and the spleen are attached on this guy, and I'm not seeing it. Like, that's the ilium, stomach, pancreas attached to stomach, spleen attached to pa pancreas. So maybe the pancreas and spleen are one, and they're just really tiny on this. This is the problem with only doing one dissection. I like it when we have a class of 24, and there's like eight of them. Because then we can go and look, because every animal is slightly different. And maybe I'll cut open another one and see what it looks like. Be nice to get a male and a female. Okay, let's do the heart. Ooh. So, the heart is in side of here. So remember we were looking at the spiracle and the gills. We're gonna cut open those gills and get into that heart area. Let's 
So in the gills, that big pectoral fin muscle too, or bone. You have branchial arteries, or those red bits going, branchial arteries are those red bits, and maybe I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. And we call them efferent branchial arteries and afferent branchial arteries. So like in and out slightly different colors so usually the efferent with the E is the red ones and the afferent are the blue ones. I think we can cut this a little bit better and then maybe zoom in. Got greasy smelly shark juices on me. Okay so you can see the little gill filaments there on the edge. You can see the with these dyes typically the efferent, efferent branchial arteries so they're coming, maybe if I cut through here, we can see them better. Maybe or will I just cut through everything? So we've got those red brachial arteries, and then there's bluish ones, which are the afferent ones. But it's harder to see. I can't see any blue in this particular specimen. It's all just red. Let's cut open. The heart is going to be underneath in here. So like here's the mouth. Oh, so like here's the snout. Here's here's the mouth. And then the gills are down here, and the nose is up that way. So I'm opening up the mouth. We're going to cut into through the gills here. I'm blocking you guys. I don't want to destroy the heart. our heart is inside there, sort of protected. And you've got a ventricle and an atria. So this is the big ventricle muscle, and then this is the smaller atria. One second, let me see if I can get that a little bit better. Where's my probe? This is the bigger ventricle, and this is the smaller atria. And then behind is the third part here. One second. Maybe I can get through here a bit better. Let's see if we can open this up more. Again, this has been damaged. But this is the sinus venosa, is this smooth stuff, and the mesentery. But the atria is this sort of floppy stuff here, atrium. And the harder ventricle muscle is the bigger part of the heart. Ventricle, atria, sinus venosa. So that's kind of cool. So that's inside. Here, here's the mouth, here's the pectoral fin. And like, this is where the heart is. It's always counterintuitive to me because when you pull it open, here's the tongue, top of the roof of the mouth, the start of the esophagus is right here, and the heart is here. It's anterior, it's closer rostral. The esophagus is closer to the tail than the heart is. Which to me is counterintuitive. That's not where I would expect it to be. I expect it to be down here more. But it's protected up here a little bit. 
and the tongue is quite like hard, it's not soft. All right.